Hello, everybody. I just wanted to share with you uh, five different ways that you can record video for your classes. Um, and this is a very basic setup, but I just wanted to show everybody what you can do. Um, first of all, I have a, another webcam just to show you around my setting. You see, I have just my laptop, um, some paper, my cell phone, and an iPad that I'm going to use. So again, I'm just going to show you how um, you can do this with all the different resources that you can have, and hopefully some of these can help you. So the very first one that I wanted to, to share with you is probably the most basic one, which is writing just in a piece of paper or um, maybe on a blackboard, and then show it to you in your, in, in your webcam. So this is as simple as it sounds. You can just write down whatever expression you're going to be working with. And this flower requires a little bit of timing, but you can just literally display it like that in your webcam. So no fancy stuff, just use whatever you have. That's going to be very effective. And again, probably you want to emphasize your explanations and not not your writing as much, right? If you are heavily writing in the Blackboard, I would suggest just to create a PDF with those, those notes and not to spend video for that. So this is definitely a good option. Another option is uh, to use your cell phone as a recording device. You can definitely use your cell phone. Let me just switch my camera so you can see what I'm, I'll be doing in here. Again, I'm just going to use my cell phone um, I'm just going to um, record. So literally using my cell phone as a recording device. And I'm, I'm actually making sure that my recording settings are kind of like in the lowest possible resolution because this, uh, you don't want your videos to be super heavy that students cannot download them. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to write in paper, just like if I were taking notes, and I'm going to use the cell phone to record the video. And um, here you can see that I can talk to the, to the video. Again, I'm just like holding the cell phone really. I don't need a, a fancy stand for this. And I'm going to use different type of um, pencils and pens so you can see the difference. Probably this is the, the most practical thing to do because we can write the Riemann zeta function. And this is how um, just a mechanical pencil will look like. And I can write down the definition over here and say that this is given by a sum where um, s or real part of s is bigger than one, otherwise it doesn't converge. So of course, you can, you can try different uh, writing utensils to see what uh, works better with your lighting and with the type of paper you have. I think that uh, the most important thing to consider what are the resources you have, if you have um, what kind of pen, uh, of pen or paper, if you have blank paper or lined paper, that is super important. So um, for example, if I want to prove that the Riemann hypothesis is true, this is, um, if real part of S equals one half, or S is a negative integer, right? And of course, you can try to use some Sharpies, and Sharpies are a little bit better. And the proof is going to be left as an exercise. So there you go, we have the proof of the Riemann hypothesis over there. And then I just stop <clears throat> the, the video um, and then I can just share it to, to Drive, to Dropbox, to um, Canvas, whatever type of, of um, basically of resources you have. So those are very basic and I think that they are very powerful. We don't have to be um, like, we don't have to, to do anything more than that. 
And as I was telling uh, some of my friends as well, we don't have to be super careful in editing everything because it's basically the same thing that happens with us in class. We don't edit our classes. If we make a mistake when teaching, we just uh, acknowledge it and rectify it and we keep going. So I think that this is very important. Don't try to, to make neat videos. Don't, don't try to, to, to make this very, um, very technical because you don't want to spend a lot of time um, trying to, to edit your videos. Like take it as, as if you were doing a regular class. Okay, so um, let me show you one of the other things that you can do if you, if you want to, to do it a little bit more pro. What I have in here is a tablet. So I have my iPad in here and I have Zoom into my app, iPad. So I'm connecting to Zoom. And now that I'm, that I'm connected to Zoom, I'm just going to share my screen. Okay. So let me, let me look at this. And I'm going to share my screen so you can see how you can use a tablet or um, any other device as a, um, as a recording device. So this is, this is going to be important. Just let me make an adjustment in here. I want my tablet to be a co-host in my Zoom meeting so I can actually share stuff. So I just made my, my tablet as a co-host. And what I'm going to do, hopefully you can see some, I'm just going to share my screen to the Zoom meeting. So I'm going to share my screen over there. And now that's the main thing. I'm sharing with everybody that my screen and then I can use just um, notes, just a regular app. There's no need to, to have a fancy app over here. I can just use notes for this. So um, for example, uh, let's create a new note. So a blank canvas. And then in here I can, I can draw, <clears throat> I can just write down anything else in here. For example, that Zeta of two, equals the sum and equals one to infinity of one over n squared. And this is pi squared over six, which is the basal problem or basal problem. And notice how I can just drive, I can scroll up and down. So it's not really like a whiteboard, it's actually a continuous set of pages. I can write more stuff in here. And then I can like scroll up and keep writing. And uh, I can always go back. And also I can uh, save this as a PDF or as an image and I can share it with people. So this would be a one way that I can deal with, uh, as, with synchronous lectures. I, I could be talking. I could be talking at the same time as showing them my, my screen. And this would be very good for, for um, for showing them in real time what's going on. But also I can use this idea to, to create a video. Now, if I want to use this to create a video, I don't need to use um, Zoom or Skype or any other uh, fancy meeting software. I can actually do everything on my tablet. So if you have a tablet, if you have an iPad, you can, you can definitely do this. Let me just look out of my session in here. Okay, there you go. So third option is what if I want to share um, a video just from my tablet? So all I'm going to do is the following thing. So this is the third option. What I want to do is just from my tablet, I'm going to, to select notes. So notes. And this is very similar to what I did before. So I'm going to create a new note. And uh, what I'm going to do now is, if you have a, an iPad, you can, you can record with this button over here. If you have a, a Windows tablet, you can also do the same thing, or uh, at least something similar. 
and then that will record all your screen. So right now I'm recording my screen and I can write down some other important properties in here. For example, I can say that um, Z, the zeta of S as a pole, or even better, it's a simple pole at S equals one. And that's the only pole, so <clears throat> we can do a meromorphic continuation. So we can meromorphically, it's a nice word, right? Meromorphically continue uh, the function to the entire plane. which is great. And uh, this one, this is the very basic note, but I can do some pictures in here, say that this is the simple pole S equals one, that we have our region of convergence to be this. And then that we can extend this past the, the, the line real part of S equals one. So, this is a very uh, simple way to create videos. And once you're done, you just stop recording. And again, one, once that, done, that is done, your video is going to be saved in, in your pictures, in your, in your pictures folder, and then you can upload it anywhere that you want. So that's, that's another way you can deal with this. And finally, another way that I wanted to share with you is uh, just to share slides. If I, if I have a PowerPoint or a Beamer or a PDF that I want to be talking about, I can just share my screen um, and either do that in real time with Zoom or to record a video with this. So all I'm going to do now is I'm, I want to share my screen. So let me share my screen with you right now. And you will see this. Um, this presentation that I have in, in Google Slides. So I would present it as, as usual. I will just click on present and then I can start talking about this. For example, this will be uh, the many ways that we can relate pi and randomness. And I would go just ahead and, and, and do this presentation just in a regular way. I would start talking about this. I would talk, for example, about the Monte Carlo method in here to, to find pi just by dropping things on a, on a square and a circle inside and then just counting the number of, of points that land inside of the circle. Um, I can also talk about Buffon's needle, which is a very nice way also to find pi just by, by dropping things on a piece of paper. Or we can do the, the experiment of finding pairs of numbers or random numbers. Now, the one thing that is very helpful whenever you're doing Google Slides, for example, as opposed to other um, tools available, is that whenever you do this presentation, if you look at the lower part of the screen, that is transcribing in real time what I'm saying. And it's pretty accurate. Even with my accent, even with math, you see that the, the words in the transcription are pretty accurate, maybe I would say 90% accurate, which is good enough. So this is also a very good resource if you are thinking about, about your students, maybe ESL or, or um, ADA students, this is something important. Um, and again, it's just literally like uh, doing a presentation. So if you have your presentations for your classes, uh, slides, as PDFs, you can just share your screen and then record them as you would do like in a, in a regular classroom. And then when you're done, you just stop the, the sharing. So those are some of the basic things that you do you want to keep in mind. Again, keep it simple. You don't want to edit uh, your videos a lot. Try to, try to not edit your videos. Um, you want this to be fluid. And again, you don't have enough time to do a lot of addition into your videos. So don't worry about it. I think that the most important is the most important thing to do is, well, first of all, to remember that we're doing remote instruction, not online instruction. So we're doing remote instruction. That means we're just replacing the, the medium that we use to communicate with students. 
And uh, whatever resource you have, that, that's good enough. So um, keep in mind, hopefully this will be helpful for you. And I'll try to be posting more information about it.